cervical cancer is actually, um, I think is a disaster right now because 13%, I think 13% also, apart from breast cancer, which is about 17%, the next cervical cancer is about 13% of all ladies under the productive age group of uh, 18 to 45, they have cervical cancer, which is caused by human papillomavirus in simple terms HPV which is preventable through vaccination. There is a Kenyan program now, or a world program, where young girls from the age of 9 to 15 are actually vaccinated. And then those ones who are older, they are given three vaccines. The young ones below 14 up to 9, they are given uh, two, two injections. One at uh, one month, the other one six months, and they complete that uh, vaccine. And this, this vaccine helps the young ladies to avoid or to prevent cervical cancer. If they are not able to be pre, uh, primarily given a vaccine, then they can do what called screening, cervical screening. Once you do cervical screening, uh, that's a sure way of prevention of cervical cancer. But most of the most of the time, our ladies are not going in for cervical screening. So you find when the time they come to the hospital, they are in stage three, stage four which requires uh, radiotherapy. And now I'm happy that uh, in country where now we have about five centers. I'm so happy that the latest is Garissa County Hospital with uh, radiotherapy. But we only had one Kenyatta before. Now we had a spray to Moi. We have, I think, Kisumu. We have another one in Aga Khan, of course, and Pisha. Then we have another center, which I'm not able to pick quickly that now we have several centers for radiotherapy. So uh, by the time patients are going for radiotherapy, the cancer is above stage two, up to stage four. So the sad thing about it is that once cancer has gone to that level, after radiation, some patients get fistra. They end up even gyno care for, for treatment. Others get uh, fistra because of the cancer, causes injury to the blood and the rectum. So, so these women come with leakage of urine and stool from cancer of cervix. But the, the sad part, I mean, the, 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 the good news about it is that if this patient go for a pap smear, they go for screening, what they call via and villi, symbol look with acetic acid or leucosiodine, then the doctor is able to, to tell that yeah, this patient has a problem and the, and the treatment is done, 100% the patient is cured. So, and then for the young ones, if the parents are able to take their kids for vaccination, there's still stigma for those parents who don't want to take their kids for their young girls. Even boys in the Western world are actually vaccinated. And I think the government can take advantage of this and even vaccinate young boys because HPV is transmitted between a boy and a girl. So if you're able to vaccinate a girl and a boy before they can transmit it, I think that's the best way. But in Kenya here, boys are not vaccinated, and only the girls are vaccinated. So I think it's time for even the Minister of Health to introduce vaccination of young boys, because this will just prevent, uh, that's a primary prevention. And then for ladies who have not been vaccinated, they can actually do, do what we call a yearly uh, screening, and then once they are found to be negative, they can even skip three years vaccine, I mean three years uh, uh, screening. The screening is cheap, it's not expensive, just a doctor's consult or a nurse, they can do that and the patient goes home. And once you do a proper secondary screening, that's prevention, secondary prevention is screening, and actually you drop down the cases of cervical cancer to the lowest level. You not get patients who come in with advanced cancer of the cervix. And the risk factors are many, early, early marriage, uh, getting babies earlier than the time the, baby, the mama has grown a bit older. So early marriage, many children, uh, not getting vaccinated, not going for um, a screening, uh, smoking is not common in our setting here, but smoking is one of those things that predispose patients to cervical cancer. But we are happy that in our setting smoking for ladies is not actually common, even the general population smoking is, is not a as much in the Western world. But most important is actually screening 
screening and vaccination. Stigma is a major cause, especially for example when you tell mothers, please take your daughters for HP vaccination. They will tell you no, they don't want to, to go vaccination for a, a STI, sexually transmitted illness, because that's why they think human papilloma virus is placed under sexually transmitted illness. But in general, uh, we feel that if a young girl is given a vaccine, HPV vaccine. There is Savilax, there is uh, Gardasil. And I think it's free now in the government facility. Almost all facilities actually of Gainoke offers free HPV vaccination through the collaboration of the government. Then you have pre protected your daughter against cervical cancer. And the Western world has vaccinated almost the entire of their population. That's why you don't find a lot of cervical cancer in those populations. Uh, the same thing happens uh, for screening. Screening is not that we are looking for cervical cancer. Screening is that we are preventing it. Because once you see early cervical change on the cervix, then you actually fix that problem through simple treatment uh, regimes, regimens. So it's not that when you go for screening, the doctors are looking for cervical cancer they are actually preventing it. Because early cervical changes are 100% treatable. Yes. So by the time the patient is getting cervical cancer, it's not easy for a patient who has been going through screening to get cervical cancer and it's not noticed in time. The moment you go for screening, then some detections are seen, some abnormal cells, they are treated and the patient escapes cervical cancer in general. So I always tell ladies that whenever you go for screening, the doctor is not looking for cervical cancer, but the doctor is actually preventing it. Yeah. Because cancer takes like three to eight years to manifest. Mm -hmm. So within those three years and eight years, something could have been seen quickly and corrected. HPV affects both male and female. So in fact, we might not say that uh, maybe this, this one has, is a carrier, this one is not. Mm -hmm. Both of us are exposed, men and female, we are, we are exposed to HPV. In fact, HPV causes other cancers like throat cancer, uh, rectal cancer and all that. So men and ladies are exposed, I think, equally to human papilloma virus. So, and if you get vaccinated, that means if these young boys and the young girls get vaccinated, then you reduce the, num the, the number of HPV in the, in, the, in the community. And once you reduce the number of HPV in the community, you definitely reduce infection rates from HPV because over 95% of the infection of HPV causes cancer. Or cervical cancer is caused by 95% of the time by human papilloma virus. The government has to move with some kind of speed and introduce uh, vaccination of boys. Like the way other Western countries are doing, Fax when you go to school to vaccinate, vaccinate boys, vaccinate girls. Because both of them are the, have a risk of transmitting the HPV virus. And then HPV virus also is causing other conditions in men. It's causing uh, throat cancer, it's causing other cancers, rectal cancer. So if you're actually going to leave the boys out, then you are not even helping them in terms of prevention of these other cancers. So if you, if you are able to vaccinate the young boys and the young girls at the same time, it means you are actually preventing cervical cancer for the girls, you are also preventing throat cancers, rectal cancers for both. So I think the message is, there is no talking about it, but I think maybe it's time for someone to provoke that kind of discussion that why in Kenya boys are not getting vaccinated and the HPV virus is transmitted by both. Why can't that one be? Why can't it happen in Kenya now? So I think it's a debate, I think. Nobody talks about it, but I think it's time for people to speak about it. Uh, HPV uh, types, types are many. There are more than 100 types, but only 15 or 30 are known to be uh, associated, around 15 are associated with sexual transmission. The others are actually, if they call skin 
and all others. They don't, uh, but the ones that are sexually transmitted are around 15 of them. And those are the ones that are associated with cervical cancer. And um, if in cases of multiple sexual partners, that, that's a, a, a sure chance of uh, getting uh, HPV, different HPV subtypes, and subsequently some of them are causing cancer. All those ones also causing uh, warts, gentle warts, like HPV 11, HPV 6, those ones cause gentle warts and they are sexually transmitted. So it's a sure way that if you have uh, there's multiple sexual partners, chances of getting transmission is high. And then we just borrow an example of what other countries are doing. Other countries are vaccinating both. I don't know why in Kenya people are just zeroed on girls, class nine, year, nine, nine years old to 14 or 15 years old. And they have just actually left boys. I remember when I did my first vaccinating year, I had, I had about 10,000 vaccines from Mark International in the US. Just a donation, I, I applied and got 10,000 vaccines costing about 100 million. I vaccinated this region of uh, Nandi, who was in Gishu, young girls who were both in primary school, in, uh, in uh, public schools and private schools. Also vaccinated the university, some university students, 2012-2013. That was our first vaccination uh, work, and I actually published it, and it uh, forms part of my PhD work. Because my PhD is on cervical cancer prevention, in the vaccine era. And what I've noticed is that if we were able to catch both boys and girls in vaccination, then at the end of the day, we could have actually caught, uh, we could have cut off a uh, transmission rate because in the years coming, these young ones will be adults. They could have been protected against HPV transmission. And then they will save our society uh, from cervical cancer. I have three daughters and um, the last born is uh, now 15. She asked me the other day about uh, where is her vaccine because her two sisters got, got vaccinated. So we took her for the vaccination. So I think what's most important is that I myself have looked at the usefulness of vaccination and I've actually tried to look at it in a different way. Um, HPV is sexually transmitted and the treatment is vaccination. So if vaccination can actually save the, the next population because they say that uh, once you've been vaccinated, you are kind of 20 years ahead, you are kind of Im immunity, immunity is there for prevention of HPV. So if you can, in the next 20 years, maybe they can ask for a booster, we don't know what the studies will show. If you're able to prevent your daughter from getting a uh, human papilloma virus and then cervical cancer, uh, without looking at the sexual transmission part of it. Because at one time, this young girl is 10 years old, if another 10 years, she will be sexually active, and there she will be exposed to HPV. So if you prevent her now from getting uh, that HPV virus, then actually you are prevented her from getting HPV infection that causes cervical cancer. So for me, I think when I look at it, it's more like not exposing your daughter to uh, early exposure, but actually preventing her from getting cervical cancer. Just the way we do childhood immunizations against measles, against diphtheria, against uh, uh, hepatitis. The same way we, because even hepatitis is sexually transmitted, but we give our young babies, newborns, anti-hepatitis uh, vaccine in line that we want to prevent them from getting those um, conditions when, if they are exposed to those diseases. So the same thing is that I never look at um, HPV as purely like uh, sexual transmission. Hence, when you vaccine a young girl, you're exposing her to early uh, sexual debut and then cancer. What you're actually support, you are, you're trying to help her to create some immunity so that even when she gets married or she has a relationship, then you are protected her from cervical cancer. Looking at cervical cancer, it is, it is a mess. One, it causes uh, fistulas. You have to go through the radiation, the chemotherapy, and then it, it spreads to other organs. So the consequence of cervical cancer cannot be compared to vaccine, vaccination.
the consequences are you know, even worse than you can think about. The cost of managing cervical cancer is too much. If you can prevent it, you have actually saved a society, given that the young ladies who are, who are stage 4, 3 cervical cancer are 28 years old, 35 years old, at the prime of their life. Like that's when they have like two kids and they are actually like starting their life and that's when they get stage 4 cancer of the cervix. So if you can actually prevent the deaths of these ladies at the prime of their life through just a simple two injections or three injections of HPV vaccination, then I think you have saved a society. Yeah. And this is a message to even the most learned people who in fact uh, kind of even say they cannot vaccinate their daughters because this is a sexual transmitted. It's just important to know that the consequence of cervical cancer is too expensive and too devastating because when you look at the patient who has cervical cancer stage 3 4, it's a very sad case of expensive radiotherapy, chemo spread to the other organs, at the end of the day organ variant, uh, hospital stay and everything and uh, of course death comes in again later. But the most important thing is if you can prevent that two short, shots of vaccine, then you have saved the society.